foreign search results to the rescue. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I'm still working on my morning stein of coffee and I thought we'd have to have a look at this article from realestate.com.au because, well, it's discussing the most important measure of property, of business success, of the future of our economy. You see it appearing again and again in one article after another that we've been looking at for weeks now. It's this amazing measure, this amazing measure that can predict the future of your business, that can predict the, the entire future of the economy. That is 100% apparently certain and reliable. Forget all of your economic measures. We don't need to measure GDP. We don't need to measure wage growth. We don't need to worry about foreign investors in Australia. We don't even need to look at building approvals. The real data we need, the real data we need is search traffic. Yes, search traffic. People sitting on your ass in your phone, looking at property. That is the future of our economy. Okay, that, that is, that's the future. Definitely, 100%. Not being facetious at all. I mean, maybe a little. So let's have a look at this, guys, because uh, the, the translation of search into, well, into actual sales, there, there's a huge lag, and maybe it's an indicator of just interest or response to news. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I remember I used to run a networking event every month in the city center here, Construction Industry Drinks and Networking. And we'd have people just turn up and it was really relaxed. No speakers, no crap like that. Um, you got happy hour drinks at the Hotel Conrad, which was the bar, part of the casino hotel. And it was you know, quite a classy bar, nice furniture. There weren't, weren't you know, lots of idiots there. It was usually hotel guests. So it was quiet and you could have a chat. It was great. And I remember we'd have, you know, getting tickets, like 100 tickets, and sometimes 50 tickets. We averaged around 10 to 20 at the end. Uh, and... Often you get all these tickets and I'd make up these name badges and put them all out there and people wouldn't turn up. Because it's really easy to search, click yep, I'll attend. But, you know, that's why I ended up sticking a price tag on it, just so people would turn up. So all well to reduce my workload of making name badges too. So that that's why I'm a bit skeptical of this. This is a very low bar of engagement and searching. How much of it is bots? So let's let's have a look, guys. It's the foreign search results are gonna save the Australian property market. So, overseas searches for Australian property are spiking as expats eye a return home. How do you know they're expats? The pandemic has led to strong growth in interest from overseas property seekers in buying Australian property, with search activity increasing by 42% since Australia's lockdown began in March. So we can see here, overseas searches for properties on realestate.com.au. Of course, we don't know what this means. See, this is the thing. With this chart, zero could be all the way down here. Could be all the way down here. Or it could be here. We don't know. We don't know. So, okay, cool. Be nice if you could give us a bit more information there, REI insight, uh, REA insights. But anyway, you know, that's gone up. That's what it means. Unlike previous spikes in offshore search, which were largely driven by offshore investors, this activity appears to be driven by a growing appetite for expats to return home. So where are our, are our expats returning from? The countries with the largest increase in search activity from expat hotspots are the United Kingdom and Singapore. So here we go. There you go. So they're saying this is from expats. Top countries for overseas property searches. Well, there you go. You know, even the Kiwis are up there. Kiwis are above Hong Kong. I mean, really, should, should New Zealand be just... Isn't it time they just became a state? I mean, come on, guys. We really should. I'm, I'm teasing. I like teasing my New Zealanders. I mean, that's an Australian hobby, guys. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. Yeah, everyone has Kiwi friends you give each other crap about. Uh, Frigga from the UK's Office of Nationals... That, well, actually, no. Maybe we don't want them a state because we don't want their... Um, their prime minister become a prime <laughs> to become prime minister of australia actually yeah no but uh you know get the kiwis over here migrate over run away figures from the uk's office of national statistics estimates there were 153,000 australians living in the uk in 2019 
There were also large expats communities in Singapore, Hong Kong, and the US. Well, that's what you want to do. You want to go over to the US, earn some nice US dollars. Oh, wait, no. The exchange rate's going down. Well, you want the Australian dollar to plunge. You want your US dollar to sit high and then come up and buy all the property. Buy all the property. Do the same thing from the UK. Then again, it's probably... it's. Pro you're probably going to be cheaper living over in the US. Your dollar will go farther. You can get a get a decent house for like 100, 150 grand US over there. It's just just crazy. It's probably depressing anything when you see how much houses cost here for what you get. Singapore is number five in terms of volume of offshore searches on realestate.com.au and has had the largest cumulative growth in search activity over the last 12 months, closely followed by the US and Hong Kong. Searches from Hong Kong increased by 81% from December 2018 to October 2019, when the pro first protests took place. Interestingly, searches from Hong Kong are up to a, to a are up a further 13% since the implementation of the new national security law in May. I mean, this is the thing: Hong Kong culture is you know, has greater similarities with Australian and British culture than it would have with mainland China. Hong Kong's a great city. And it's a shame. I'm glad I visited. I really am. When, years ago, Rachel and I, we went over there for a university trip and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. We were staying at uh, Parkview. We had family there who were working in the, the uh, finance area, so they had to stay in their apartment. It was wonderful. With the announcement that the federal government would help Hong Kong nationals who may look, look to move to Australia, it will be interesting to see if this increases search activity further. Pro and... Well, you know, I've got a complete bias. I live in the Asian part of Brisbane. So if we get a whole lot of Hong Kong nationals coming up here, it'll, it'll increase demand for property. Yeah, no, bring them over. Yep, 100%. 100%. I remember when we were going, we went to like the back alley places to eat, the back alley places to eat. And uh, being a, you know, a bogan I am, I am terrible with chopsticks. I'm, I'm quite terrible with them. And I'd be there and try, I'd struggle. And I got it at the end when I was over there, I, I, you know, struggling to eat chopsticks. And they'd come out with me with the one fork they had out the back to give it to me. And because uh, they felt bad looking at me. But we had some really, really good food. Little little tiny places around the place. Oh, and I, I, I mean, we were going out. Because we were uni students, so we'd be partying. We'd be out drinking, you know, as you do when you're young and stupid all night. And I had this old guidebook and all the rest of the bars didn't exist anymore. And we'd... we'd hooked up with these bunch of I think, British Airways or Virgin Atlantic air hostesses and pilots. And we were going with them from bar, bar to bar. And I remember buying like rounds of rounds of vodka in little ice glasses in this one bar. And oh, they drank way too much. We, we couldn't keep up. We couldn't keep up. Oh, I'm so old and boring now. It's awesome. I, that's the last thing I would want to do nowadays. <laughs> you know, back then in your 20s, if you, you know, go out for a, for a good night on, you know, you recover the next day, boom, you're back. The closer you get to 40, guys, uh, yeah, you lose time. Every five years, it gets worse, you know, 20 to 25. Then it starts to become a couple of hours or a day. And 30, oh, you, you write a whole day off. Mid-30s, you're gone for two days. You're gone for two days. So Chinese re uh, buyers remain inactive. China has always been the top country in terms of search on realestate.com.au. However, volumes have been decreasing since October 2019 that now only comprise 6% of searches made by the top six countries. Here's the thing. When the average punter is concerned that Chinese buyers are having an influence on our property, you know, and then you, you have all the, the um, you know, the 50 cent army going, no, America invests more in Australia, yada, 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 which is true. America does, but they invest in bigger projects. You look at the actual number of, because this is foreign investment here. At one point, ne nearly 100% of building approvals was for, uh, yeah, foreign approved foreign investment in housing. But you look at the numbers, you know, you say, oh, China's, you know, only number five in Australia, whatever it is. But then you look at the number of applications for foreign investment, it's much, much higher. So the cost per application is much lower. They're, in, they're buying in property, smaller property. So that's why it's it's having an inflated effect on our property prices. And you can't blame them. You can't blame them for wanting to get their money out of China and locking it in Australia. It's much safer, hopefully. Hopefully, <laughs> you know. And where America, you know, okay, Bechtel will come over and do these huge projects or Chevron will come over and do these huge projects worth a fortune. 
So that's why they look bigger. What do you think is going to have the greatest impact on the small person, on the larger majority? Well, you know, we worked on Bechtel jobs. It helped me start up my business and had great benefits to us. But, you know, that's compared to how many people are struggling to get into the housing market. So you've got to keep it in mind. So if we're getting a cooling off in Chinese searches, that's going to have hit property. And I don't know if the expats are going to you know, soak that up or if the Hong Kongers are going to soak that up. So searches peaked in early 2018, largely on the back of the volume of students coming to study in Australia. However, since that time, searches have dropped by 37%, with many overseas students unable to return to Australia. And I'm just waiting to see the universities lobby to get these international students over. Because then their, their investment in student accommodation is going to take a hit. Oh, no, I, I mean, they love their students and want to see them learn. Of course, of course. I mean, that's the thing. If you've, you've gone to university in the last decade and you've just seen the terrible quality of education some of these international students are receiving here, it, it really, it, it's, it's, it's hard to watch. I feel sorry for them. They're spending a fortune Often their parents are going into debt. Not all of them are loaded to uh, come over here. And yeah, they're struggling through some of them. They just, some students don't even have the English skills to study. And this, when I did this, this was years ago, it's gotten worse. It's gotten much worse. The problem is they want to come over here. They want to learn English. Uh, but, you know, they get stuck in classes where the majority of people are from overseas. You know, so the smart ones, they'll really make an effort to make friends with Aussies. So you go to parties, you get to know each other. That's the challenge. But it can be it can be difficult. So, you know, I had one friend. Uh, he was over from Malaysia. And what really frustrated him, he brought out his notebook from the term before. And, look, this lecture is exactly the same. Why am I paying so much money for this garbage? And, yeah, he, <laughs> he was bloody angry because they pay a lot, guys. They pay a lot. The uni just sees them as cash cows. Where are offshore property seekers looking to buy? Here we go. Each country has its own preference when it comes to a popular place, places to live. The UK, US and New Zealand favor the beach towns of New South Wales, Queensland and WA, as well as suburbs with large communities of people from those countries. News Aheads is the top five for all these countries, with Manly and Bondi also popular. Good old news, huh? This trend is similar for China and Hong Kong, but the data shows buyers from those countries tend to gravitate to the New South Wales and Victorian suburbs, Box Hill, where there are large Chinese populations, such as Sydney's Chatsworth and Melbourne's Glen Waverley. Singaporean search data also reveals a preference for Glen Waverley, along with pricey Melbourne suburbs of Turak, Hawthorne, and South Yarra. This is one of the things with uh, some of the Chinese uh, property search sites. They'll actually have the race makeup of the suburb. You know, I mean, because, well, Chinese are based, guys. Asians don't care. <laughs> They're based. Given overseas investors traditionally buy in areas with lots of new development or else located close to Australian universities, the suburb's spe specific search data certainly points to activity from expats. So offshore investors are still interested in new developments, but are being more selective. Offshore investors and temporary residents typically do not typically do not allow are not allowed to buy established dwellings, and as a result, gravitate to new builds. So the total number of dwelling units approved. Here we go. However, data from the ABS showed approvals for new dwellings fell by 16.4% in May, which potentially may be an industry response to lower offshore demand. Currently, there are more than 900 individual projects currently listed on realestate.com.au, with the majority of them concentrated in Victoria, New South Wales, and Queensland. I mean, that's the thing. That's, that's the problem, guys. You're going to... Well, there's going to be an oversupply of apartments. And are, they, are those apartments catering to either downsizers or to, you know, overseas students or to foreign investors? Is that what you want to go in to start raise a family? The draw of luxury apartments. Apartment developments receive the most views from offshore property seekers, especially those from Hong Kong and Singapore. Users from Hong Kong make up 20% of all views for the most popular developments mentioned below. Well, there you go. Any in Queensland? Nope, all in Melbourne. This is the luxury end of the market, with the top five developments all having properties between 3.8 and 6.7 million. 
The most viewed developments by overseas searchers is Paragon in Melbourne, a 48-level luxury boutique development in the city's CBD. So how will heightened expat, expat activity impact the market? So according to BIS Oxford Economics, overseas migration flows aren't forecast to return to previous levels until mid-2021, which will impact the level of demand of the market. And while the pandemic has certainly driven an increase in overseas activity, or overseas Australians wanting to return home, this activity is unlikely to completely offset the short to medium term reduction in activity from offshore investors and migrant buyers. So there we have it, everyone. There we have it. So all the hoopla about foreign search results saving our property market seems to have fizzled at the end of their own article, doesn't it? What do you think, everyone? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Thanks, everyone, and keep searching online. Take care.